Hello everyone! In this video from ION Software, I would like to show you a shot which was demoed at NAB in 2010. All of the elements of this shot were entirely composited in Fusion 6. I would like to especially draw your attention to the creation of the water shader. Let's begin. This is the composition with the scene setup and the shader setup for the water. Here we go. Let's start with the scene. The scene itself consists of a set of simple planes which I had displaced, like this one. After combining them, I used a camera as an input for the UV map tool to assign new UV coordinates to the whole mesh. This image, where I deleted part of the ground using a polygon mask, is used as a texture for this existing scene setup. Then I created another set of three simple planes for the water basin, and I textured these planes with a concrete brick material setup. I combine the two elements together, and this is what yields the scene, where the water plane is already visible. The water plane is yet again just a plane. I use the same projection camera to assign a set of UV coordinates. I add some ripples and displacement to the mesh. The ripples came from this image sequence where I found a river with waves. A reference frame showing the average of the sequence is used to get the displacement information for it. So the final scene looks like this one. At this point, I also added a camera for rendering and two spotlights to the scene, simulating the light of the water surface according to the illumination already shown in the texture. For the water shader, I started with the same sequence. I created two slightly different versions and fed them into the foreground and background input of the falloff tool, which is used to define the diffuse color of all the water surface. I use the same image sequence again but this time I added a fast noise tool to add some detail. This image is used as a bump map for each of the shader components. The shader consists of four components, which are diffuse, refraction, specular, and reflection. Let's start with the refraction. For the refraction, I used a spherical image map which I color corrected and blurred a bit to simulate dirty, murky water on the ground. The sphere map tool converts this image to an environment map material and provides the according texture space. Since I also want to see the elements I created in Fusion in my refraction map, I used a scene setup like this one and a six point camera setup, placed where the original render camera is located. After rendering the results of each camera, I have six images representing a cube map. The cube map tool converts the images into another environment map. So I have two environment maps now, one spherical image and a fusion created cube map. I want to blend these two together dependent on the depth below the water surface. So I create these two small scene setups. The water surface and the basin again. I rendered them out separately, including the Z channel. Then I use a custom tool and subtract one Z channel from another one to create a mask, which helps me to blend from one environment map to another one. This image you see here is projected into the scene as a texture using an instance of the render camera. On the shader side, a catcher tool receives this image 
and a set of channel Boolean tools connected with them is used to blend from one environment map into another one. The next is a reflection component, which is created in a similar way. I use a similar setup I've shown before, and again, use a six-point camera, which creates a reflection map for me of the fusion-created elements. I merge them onto another spherical image map using a material merge tool. So this is our shader, including all the displayed components. As a last step, I created a texture simulating the sunlight reflecting on the windows of the buildings surrounding the water's surface. I just added them together. Connect the resulting shader tool to the match, and let's have a look at the final stage of our scene. Which is this one. It looks a little strange when viewed using the perspective view, since the shader only works when viewed through the render camera. So let's do this. And we can go back to our falloff tool, for example. Change the color settings of it. Now you can see the shader is updated in real time. Let's switch back to our original color right here. And you see the rendered output looks like the shader displayed in the viewport. Here's the result. And here you go, our finished shot.